Hey family, thank you for following and trusting the path that led you here. This is Flow Space, Conscious Conversations with J&D. I'm Jerrica. And I'm Deandra. Our discussions will be led by intuition and spirit as we continue to evolve and learn about what it means to live an earthly human experience. Welcome to Flow Space. I'm Deandra. I'm Jerrica. And I'm French. And today we are going to discuss inner child healing and what that means to each one of us and how to process our emotions. Yes, we're all in different stages of our journey and our inner child healing. So tune in to hear what it looks like from different perspectives and in different chapters of our lives. We are really excited to share this episode with you. And if you want to support us in any way, you can click our support us with a love donation. You can also support us by following us on our social media. Our Instagram is Flow Space the Podcast. And you can also subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube and like this video and leave a comment if you find something that you enjoyed. And most importantly, if the message resonates, please share with your loved ones, your family, and your friends. Yes, and always remember, wherever you go, give yourself space, space to, to flow. Nice. So basically, um, what I was sharing with Franchi was after doing the inner child healing workshop i don't know if it's this i don't know if it's the soul uh the eclipse season i don't know if it's retrograde i don't know if it's the inner child healing i don't know if it's all the coursework because obviously i've been like diving very deep within myself and discovering things from childhood or my past that influence the way that i do specific things today like who i have associated myself to be or just like accepted um like oh i have ocd and that's me but it's like okay where did this come from and these past few weeks i've been really connecting to like the source of these things and a lot of things have come up so i realize as a person like one i've always known myself to be very forgiving like you punch me in the face right now and then as soon as it's over i'm okay you know like we could keep moving forward you mean like as soon as you got punched yeah, like if something drastic happens and it depends the situation because, you know, there's times that the ego comes to, comes out and it's like, no, you have a right to be mad, like stay mad over insignificant things. But I'm not one to hold on to something. So if like you burn me in any way that I feel burned, it doesn't take much for me to move past it. And then like I could kick it with you regularly, like I won't be holding grudges. That's what I thought. So I realized, I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't actually the truth. Like, maybe I don't even deal with it. You know, like, I just bury whatever occurred without processing how it made me feel or my emotions connected to it to just keep moving so that my life could be harmonious or peaceful without having to feel whatever the situation made me feel. And that has been having me in my head a lot, I think. Like, I've been very inwards, and I was telling Franch earlier today, like, I don't know if I'm depressed, you know, and it can be a lesson for me because I, previously to, like, this moment, don't subscribe to depression. It's like, depression is not real, that's a way that Big Pharma uses to make money on pills and stuff like that, but what I'm experiencing is definitely opposite of that, like, my life on the outside is really good I don't know why I'm getting emotional (laughs) my life is really good I'm so grateful I have nothing to complain about like I can't emphasize that enough to myself and as I say it because I don't want to be seen as like ungrateful but then I'm like finding myself so sad it's like why am I sad so the inner child keeps coming up and it's like I'm sad because I almost don't know who I am like I know who I am but I find myself like questioning like okay what is really me what is really true like am I this peaceful person or am I just like actually bottling up everything that I I experienced just to not deal with it 
And the other day I was telling Fridge, like, victim mentality is one of my triggers. I don't believe in victim mentality. I believe, like, that we are all so powerful, we are all so strong. And whenever I hear somebody saying something that I could associate with victim mentality, I immediately, I'm like, no. Like, I have no compassion for that. Like, whatever the situation you're in, it doesn't matter. You're stronger. You know, like, don't associate with victim mentality. Get yourself out of that. And I connected that to something that happened in childhood where I don't associate myself as a victim at all. But it's like, maybe I was, you know, like, but I didn't feel safe enough to express that to anybody. And it's like, a secret I kept with me for like all my life so yeah <laughs> well yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean first of all you know thanks for being uh so open and vulnerable you know I mean I know you're just expressing yourself not e- e- intending to for it to come out this way yeah but I wish my voice for, wasn't uh, shaking <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's okay um yeah and to add to that really thank you so much for sharing it because it's really powerful to show up in your experience right now and owning it and allowing yourself the space to go there to figure out what it is there is to uncover instead of continuing with the pattern that you're looking to leave which is just like overlooking it and continuing moving forward You've done all of these things recently that's allowed the space to allow whatever has been buried to come to light. And in that process, of course, there may be things that have been so far buried that you don't even know, like what emotions you're experiencing now, how they relate to those experiences because yeah. of how far gone they are in within yourself mm-hmm. and it's only natural to when things are being addressed that haven't been addressed for so long for there to be an emotional reaction to it and it's okay yeah like knowing it's okay is something that's really um helpful with this and why i wanted to join like in conversation was because like i completed the inner child's healing workshop that all three of us are either doing or plan to do branch hasn't begun yet and you're in the middle of it so I thought it would be really cool to like discuss that and like what it's brought up not like the specifics of what it's brought up because I do feel like that's intimate and private but like how we navigated going through it because in conversation this morning I was like I feel that inner child healing workshop fucked me up (laughs) (laughs) you know like right now I'm fucked up from that but I can also see how pivotal it's going like it is for me like I'm taking actions in my daily life um to find the truer me as opposed to just being like oh yeah I'm this way because of this pattern I learned or this habit that isn't true to me or it's based in a trauma you know because I don't feel that the way I am I definitely see like the programmings that run or I see like the influence that isn't the like pureness that I believe myself to be. Yeah, like that's so major. That's not many people don't even choose that path ever in this one lifetime that we have here. So to do that, of course, there's going to be a process along with that that may be unfamiliar to what you're accustomed to experiencing. And to be able to extend grace and compassion through this unknown territory that you're choosing to go through is so courageous and brave. And it's really inspiring um, to those who are close to you and to anyone listening, like, this is part of the journey. And actually, I was telling French upstairs, and it was in relation to you, I didn't say you, but how, like, there's always someone in the group who is going for it going outside the comfort zone choosing to grow and those on your team eventually you lead the way you pave the way for everyone else to continue to rise like we all give and take in that yeah it's like you you're you're pushing dragging encouraging (laughs) you know like in some shape form way but like you're not asking or telling us or trying to show us something that you're not already doing yourself or have done yourself so yeah i I guess that's kind of what you were saying yeah 
yeah exactly yeah. and that's like so big i can't emphasize it enough because without it no one grows and it really brings gratitude to who you keep around you yeah Ed. yeah go ahead because we, we don't grow alone you know so it's it's i don't want to say it's easier but there's more there's more interaction when there's more people that you spend time with there's more people you speak to you know so uh, if one person in the group does one thing most likely it's going to influence the people the rest of the people in that group hopefully positively you know depending on <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. how you want to live your life or whatnot but that's the ripple you know like yeah. that's something that we speak of often it's like if you want to see change in the outer world you have to have that change started in your inner world because the outer world is a reflection of you and no matter how like big or small it is whatever it is that you do decide to like enhance about yourself then that's attractive like people around you are definitely going to want to do that for themselves and it goes in the opposite like what you were saying it could be something negative you know like if you start some sort of habit like an addictive behavior or like something that's destructive people around you get curious as well and then that's how you see like groups of people like doing whatever it is harmful behavior mm-hmm. yeah I, I think another example ways. like yeah I- an example of that like I guess in a larger version of it, larger version of it, um, like a famous person or a president or something like that, you know, mm-hmm. like they they can they influence people in certain ways, and people tend to only look at that way as the the real way of influencing. Oh, I can only change the world from that place. I can only change the world if everybody knew me, or if I had this many followers. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, that's as large minded as that can seem. It seems small minded because you're ignoring all the small ripple effects that you know you can cause around you at all times you know to the people you see every day then the people they see every day and then the people those people see every day so it's like you know not that we're doing things to have an impact but you know whether you choose to or not you are having some kind of impact there you go that's a great um example to give because you don't have to have the biggest platform or like this celebrity fame or whatever to influence like we influence each other and then we influence from that we take it and it keeps going outwards exactly that's so cool yeah and like with the inner child healing um bringing it back to that concept what i had said is that i feel that i jumped into it like fully and this is part of um characteristics from childhood like learned behavior i don't fully process things you know like within myself whether it's that I don't feel like safe enough the capacity like to hold the emotions because of how strongly or deeply I feel um I think I go deep but then there's even more depths to where I can go uh and I rush through things so like my form of processing is very quick that's why like if something happens I can get over it so quickly because I'm not attaching or holding on um and with the inner child healing I experienced that for myself. What I did was I went through it like multiple times a day, every day, like until I finished it. I didn't give myself the time to like sit with what I'm feeling. So now it can be like overload for what I am feeling and experiencing. And did you find like the experiences that you're having now, um, are they just random? Like, do they just occur? And then now you're able to associate it with the work from the workshop. Like, how did you make that connection to how it's unfolding for you now? Um, I think that it is random at times. And I also think that when I catch myself in a what I call learned behavior that isn't true to me, like a reactive state, I see it. And then, like, I dive into where that came from. Mm. And a lot of it has to do with, um, like, being so responsible for myself and others around me. And one thing in particular that I spoke about today was how I care for others more than I care for myself. So my compassion is out of balance. And there's many instances where it's like I was in a, a not good, okay situation like I shouldn't have been in this situation and instead of speaking out I kept it to myself and I had to deal with whatever it was by myself out of fear of what will happen to the other person and even recently like it's something that's in my my life like currently 
a few months ago, I was in a supermarket near where I live and a man was like, I don't know if he was trying to abduct me. I don't know what he was doing, but he was literally telling me like, you're coming with me right now. I think we spoke about it on an episode and out of fear of like making a scene because I wanted to like protect him. Like I didn't want like the situation to get out of hand. I just like stood quiet and like was fearful within myself. And then I got to my car and I was hysterical about it. And it's like, who knows what that man was really up to? Like, why am I considering what's going to happen to him over my safety first and foremost? It's it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's not crazy. It's life, you know, yeah. like to be able to make those connections and show us how deep our childhood experiences go in showing themselves in our adult reality. Yep. And there's something crazy about that is actually, I'm sure, more normal than not. But we may not always have the awareness of that connection that exists in our behaviors and our adult experiences. But that's the crazy part. Like, I know it's not crazy. Yeah. There's nothing crazy. <laughs> but it's really, like, mind-boggling to me because I have this awareness of self. I know how important establishing safety within the self is. I know how important it is for self-care and, like, taking care of me. I can't fill up another person's cup if my cup's not filled. And in knowing all of these things because of an experience in childhood, it carries forward um, where it's like, no, let me consider them before I'm considering myself, even if I know it's going to be like haunting me in a way. And for me, what comes to mind is like in the processing of not fully processing, like in the learned behavior of just like brushing it off, mm -hmm. how the processing could be more from like a logical standpoint, from more like a mental like, OK, this is what it is. Oh, OK, that makes sense. Let me move forward instead of like um, sinking into the body's experience, mm -hmm. remaining in the mind space. Yeah. yeah. And then that's what I feel helps or causes it to become a habit because like once you make that choice once it's easier to make that choice again and again to the point where it's not even a choice anymore it's just a learned behavior like you're saying you know so it's like slowly that one choice can be like if you allow it to keep happening and not checking yourself and not being honest with yourself um and i could say this you know for myself too like i feel i don't want to say most people because i don't know most people in the world mm -hmm. but i feel a lot of people that i've interacted with i can recall a lot of like oh i am this way because i am this way like yeah, yeah this is what it is and just because you know like mm -hmm. okay like it's it's great you got the awareness that you know why you are the way you are but accepting it and not choosing to maybe grow or learn from it or change something that you don't like or you know um it's like oh, instead of blaming like this is just who i am um Like taking the action. Yeah, like taking that action. Like you can't just accept like this is just who I am and not change it because you will find yourself in that same situation, that same cycle. Yeah. You know, that same decision in so many scenarios, you know, from small to, to big. Mm -hmm. And that's something like that's a really good highlight because me, myself, I'm like, you know, that's how I've operated in the ways of believing like oh i'm this really responsible person i look out for everybody like i think everything through i think possibility like a through a million z you know whatever um but it's like why like where did that start like yeah i'm comfortable doing it because it's what i've been doing for so long but it doesn't feel good to me you know like i notice in times where i can almost have resentment towards it because when i broke it down like where did this come from it came from trauma and it's like yeah of course it's gonna make me feel resentful because a part of me is being triggered by that memory going back to that space of trauma even though like I'm comfortable in it so it's like really having to face the comfort and being uncomfortable I was afraid of being uncomfortable you know like even now like within my own mind when I think of certain things it's like hold on like let's close that door for a second because that's making me really uncomfortable and I say that to say, like, it's a process. You don't have to go diving deep. And this is something with me as well. Like, I think that I can go super deep with it to get it over with and move on. But that's not it at all. You know, like, because the depths continue to go. And if you're just trying to rush the process, you're not fully experiencing and, like, fully healing. 
mm-hmm. and that's where like the resurfacing can can occur yeah so if you're not ready like that's a message for myself like if, if you're not ready to fully visit something it's okay take the baby steps visit it in like small increments establishing that safety like knowing it's okay like that happened in the past like i'm here now and i'm gonna do better like i'm gonna do my best and just going at it little by little like you don't have to freaking empty the whole house in a minute mm-hmm. yeah to jump back into the inner child healing mm-hmm. uh what i was gonna say is that it is okay like if you're not ready to visit something like it is okay like because you know from what I said earlier, it's easy to say like, oh, why don't you want to look at your childhood? I'm like, well, I'm I'm fine the way I am. There's nothing wrong with being fine with the way you are. Um, or like that hurts me too much and I'm just not ready to go there. Like that's that's perfectly fine, too. You know, like and I think in relation to what me and Jerrica were speaking about earlier, as she was telling me how, like, you know, she dove into it. You're like halfway through and you're like kind of taking your time a little bit, I guess, in relative miss to her. Mm-hmm. And me, I've been told about this since you started and i've not really done anything but in my mind i've just been um thinking about it little by little like over several days different instances like i'm just based off of things that i've heard from you guys like i i just catch myself like all right okay i can see how this can be related to this moment in my childhood that i felt like did not affect me and then hey oh shit maybe maybe it did affect me and then just not necessarily feeling like oh man my life has been a lie or anything like that at least for me it's more like understanding i didn't look at it negatively as how it impacted me but realizing what behaviors i may have that could have been caused from a specific moment or a specific choice that i met i i made as a as a child or somebody else made for me as a child Mm -hmm. um so that's why i think i've been taking my time and I feel like seeing you makes me feel like I should take my time, yeah. you know, because I, I feel like I'm the type of person that is kind of fine with himself. But like how you mentioned earlier, there's always that one person in the group that's, you know, stepping out the comfort zone. And it's like, all right, OK, let's I I really care for you as a person. You know, I value what you think and I value what you feel. And um, so, you know, I'm like, you know, if she f- is finding something of value from this, because at this point, I don't think it was hitting you in the way that you know it's hitting you now yeah (laughs) it was more like this is so cool i am learning this i am learning that and i'm like you know what why not let me give it a shot like i Mm -hmm. i'd be chilling you know i don't really try and push my own boundaries too much so i I was very interested so to see how how much deeper it's gone and i haven't even started based off of your experience is uh you know it's it only shows that i think it's okay to you know take your time it doesn't matter like whether you do it immediately it's yeah. just you know do what what what's right for you as well as as far as that goes i guess it goes back i feel like every single time like there's no rush like where are we rushing to where yeah. are we going <laughs> we here right now or no yeah. exactly and that's what was really interesting about this whole experience like learning about the different ways i process things and why like that concept of like i just don't want to deal anymore i want to keep the peace like i want to experience harmony and then seeing how that in itself is destructive behavior. It's like delusional almost. Mm-hmm. It could be like, um, you know, like that gaslighting that is a spiritual bypassing. Where it's just like, okay, yeah, it's love and light. It's all good all the time, you know. Yeah. And it can be. But when there's things that haven't been addressed, it, it's just simply to address them. Mm-hmm. Um, and like honoring this, the process of what that looks like. Because for myself and where I am with the inner child healing, I catch um, the things that I've discovered through what I've done so far in the inner child healing, how they relate to my um, childhood. I catch how those things play out in my current life. And when that happens, I allow myself the opportunity to understand it mentally, but then also allow myself, uh, allow my body to catch up to what my mental is processing so that it's more integrated. Mm -hmm. instead of like oh yeah i see that from my mental understanding without allowing like the body to fully be in the in the present moment of what it is that i'm mentally understanding Mm -hmm. um and constantly bringing safety back into my body has helped me and i've used that as kind of 
um, a guiding light as to like, when am I ready to continue on to the next um, prompt in the workshop? Where it's like, okay, I've seen this come up. Um, I see how I can react to it. Um, and it's so funny because like, you'd be trying to talk about something serious. And it's like, it doesn't even have to be that serious, you know? Yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be that serious. Like it's serious, but like the weight that we put on it instead of just normalizing it. And it's yes. like, yeah. Yeah, like why why are we putting that weight on it? You know, like it's it's one thing to feel the energy, but like it shouldn't have to feel so heavy, you know? Mm -hmm. That's just us putting that Attachment. on ourselves. Yeah. yeah. This has to be added in. This yeah, like we're talking about I, I, I don't know. I think this could be the whole thing. The post the after credits oh. where it's like oh, we had a pause and we chasing <laughs> our cat. You know, that could have been that that could be the after credits. Yeah. You know, because I feel like a jackass wearing sunglasses when she started fucking crying. I'm like, bruh, <laughs> the worst time to look like I don't, I'm too cool for school wearing sunglasses inside. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> nobody cares. Yeah. Uh, nobody cares. Oh, God. So but funny. like you were saying. <sighs> what was I saying? You were saying like um, before going to the next process. Oh, yeah. like, you know, all this happens when you're trying to like talk about something serious. But it's like it doesn't really have to be that serious. You know, um, I believe you said something about um, speaking about things like this shouldn't have to feel so heavy. Like it's sh it should be more normalized. Like it's one thing, like obviously being vulnerable and, um, you know, feeling your feelings as you say it. Um, but we should allow ourselves to feel more comfortable and not put such a heavy feeling on ourselves because it's not anybody else necessarily putting those feelings on ourselves that may be that other inner child behavior like from other people telling oh you can't be feeling like that like you can't yeah. be doing this like you it's know stop that feeling serious. that it's not that serious you know so maybe you internalize that yourself so I mean like yeah it isn't that serious so let me speak on it you know mm -hmm. so yeah I think what makes it feel heavy for me is because it doesn't feel heavy, but it does feel heavy. You know, like, it's not something that I feel is, like, I'm not drowning, you know. But I'm definitely, like, swimming in deep water. <laughs> and I think that it comes from, I don't know if it's, like, how much I care about myself now. It can arise, like, anger, like, oh, my God, I cannot believe you experienced this. Or, like, I can get angry, but then that's where, like, victim mindset can slip in and I can start playing the blame game. Like, oh, well, why didn't this person, like, help or, like, no, why didn't I feel safe enough to speak up? Why didn't I just say something to the person? You know, like, certain things like that, like, the all of the what ifs. And that's where I feel the heaviness comes from because it's, like, a part of me wishes I can go back to that moment and change it <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what we were talking about like we're here talking about something serious and these like funny things keep happening yeah and one i feel like you know it's a big a big part of it is you you decided to go all in on all of this so there was no in between all of the things that came up for you mm -hmm. so you're addressing all of them at the same time and like that takes a lot of effort and that can arrive more like questions and the what ifs and all of the things, mm -hmm. um, which is really brave in itself because you're like facing it. You're not like turning away from all of the things that your mind is bringing forward. Um, but it's also important to extend the grace to like what happened, happened the way it did. Mm -hmm. And now every time like those things surface within you and you feel it, you can be the one to show up in the way that you wish someone else showed up for you back then or the way that you wish you showed up for yourself yeah that's a really good point because uh that overcorrection we sometimes speak of it's finding the fine line where it's not like allowing my present moment to be tainted by pain from the past and then like showing up overly showing up because i didn't show up and it's like i'm never gonna let that happen again like, I'm going to show up for myself always and I'm going to be like the toughest and I'm going to speak up even when I don't want to, blah, blah, blah. But that's not necessarily true to me, you know. So having that balance and not letting that pain create something in me that's not true. Yeah, like not operating from the trauma 
-hmm. for me when I was sharing that I was coming from my own experiences with what has surfaced for me in the inner child healing and for me one of the main takeaways so far is around um, speaking up for myself and being my true self and uh, just making myself feel small Mm -hmm. um, and feeling um, like insecure in that kind of way of like taking up space and for me, I process that now, like when that happens, it's actually much lighter than it ever was before because I could recognize it and address it and then move forward and taking up more space and being comfortable um, embodying myself more. Um, so when I was sharing about like showing up for yourself, for me, where that was coming from was my own experiences and my inner dialogue more than it's anything to do with how I'm showing up externally. Because it's the inner dialogue, really, for me, that um, is what I have to address more than it is, has anything to do with what's actually taking place um, externally. I feel I can uh, relate to that. I feel like for me, a lot is my internal dialogue that I've noticed like, oh, OK, maybe I think that way because of this or just or maybe just watching like, oh, I'm, this is a pattern I keep doing in these moments, you know, mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I'm just saying, I, f- I feel the yeah. same. <laughs> For me, it's the opposite because the inner uh, self, the inner dialogue, like I can recall like the one instance that stands out to me that has been like the one that's on my mind every day now. Um, I knew in the moment that something was not right. Like my inner dialogue was like, why is this happening? Like, what the hell is going on? Like, wh- you know, like it was an alert that this wasn't right. And it was like, okay, I should say something. Oh, no, but I can't say something. So, like, the inner dialogue for me is always um, matching, like, what I feel, at least. Um, But it's, like, then expressing it outwardly. That's where it's like, okay, let me not say something. Like, not speaking the truth, I guess, my truth. Mm -hmm. Um, And the ways that that can show up. Because, like, I am very expressive. You know, like, sometimes I'm overly expressive. So it's... That's why I feel like it's so confusing for me because like some things that are so insignificant, (laughs) I overly communicate and I communicate and I go deep with like everything. But then it's like, how deep am I going within myself? Like the the things that cause me pain, I guess. Yeah, like the things that actually matter to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why you may over address things that don't. Yeah, exactly. And that's why um, my little sister Gio points it out a lot. It's like. If I'm feeling overwhelmed or something, I start like cleaning like crazy. And it's because like I can control that. I can't control like whatever it is that I can control it, but like I'm choosing not to. So I'm outwardly like expressing it in a different medium. Mm -hmm. And same thing, like when I start hyper focusing on insignificant things, it's because like I'm choosing to not focus on the other things that are actually more important so like i'm preoccupying my mind with nonsense it's a distraction yeah it's a distraction yeah and have you recognized those moments when they surface now oh yeah it's i'm telling you like it's so easy to spot things um so so easy to spot things that's with inner child healing like this specific one i feel it was really helpful Um, But there's so much more to further explore. And I think it just begins with now that you're able to spot these things, actually speaking up for yourself, speaking Mm -hmm. your truth one instance at a time. Yeah. Feeling like you have to do it every single time, but slowing down enough so you feel the safety in your body to do so Mm -hmm. and take it one encounter at at a time. Yeah. I I think that just goes with like honoring the moment, you know, like each moment is its own unique moment you know like regardless of whatever pattern happened before from another situation another person yourself Mm -hmm. you have to give every single moment that new chance obviously you learn and you do things from experience and you know you should you should cherish the things you learn because the things you learn have gotten you to where you are now Mm -hmm. Um, but also recognizing something that you have learned that is no longer serving you and just relearning or just fine-tuning that learn behavior into something more you but not allowing it to be just a pattern or a habit you know really allowing yourself to make that choice every single moment yeah not every single moment but you know those moments where you are presented a choice yeah definitely i feel like 
it's very helpful to hear and like practice um because something else like it's high it's really like all connected and when you start doing this like self-exploration and self-discovery on like different levels you see more and more things so like another habit of mine is to really like go all in um like to cover everything that's a possibility to be done with it right so like in when i was doing this inner child healing and especially like these last few days i'm like okay do i say something now about something that happened 20 years ago you know or like more than 20 years i don't know the math but like do i say something now and then i was like what's the purpose of that like what is that gonna do is it gonna make me feel better possibly is it gonna make me feel worse possibly is it gonna make other people feel like bad or sad or something possibly so that's something too that i've been navigating like how do you move forward and i think that's the key it's like okay we could revisit the past we could talk about it a lot of the people from the past are no longer alive you know or like present in my life so what will that do nothing maybe just give me a little bit of comfort but i could find that comfort in other ways like speaking to the inner child journaling whatever it is like it doesn't have to be a whole production and then like you said like in every moment that arises that i do have the opportunity i make a different choice yeah it's whatever you're comfortable with Mm -hmm. you know how far and like how much do you feel like it weighs on you and what would it take to eliminate that weight first with yourself and if that requires like involving others especially if others were involved in something you felt um especially if they're in your life and you care for them and you have a relationship with them now I feel it could be beneficial so that like you're living in your truth like all around and you're also showing up for your inner child yeah but it's not always necessary and it may not always feel safe or not the time to do that Mm -hmm. so it's up to like what feels most important for you yeah like what i for me specifically in this situation i keep revisiting like what is my intention if i speak up about something from the past in the present moment like what is the intention there is it to make my ego feel good like oh i'm i'm actually speaking up for myself is it to make the inner child feel safe like oh she does care you know like what does that come from because sometimes it's not needed Mm -hmm. and it's like why is that even a question you know yeah like now that it's in your mind to consider what is the intention like it means that it's in your mind to consider it being an option Mm -hmm. and like an over like um i think what it could boil down to is like the decisions we make now with full awareness or like the amount of awareness that we have uh knowing how it impacts like others and even ourselves later down the the line you know and i think of something like I don't know, things that, like, dysfunctional families might experience or, like, just humans, you know, like, some kind of trauma that experiences. And it's, like, people know about it, but it's kept, like, hush-hush. So it's, like, the awareness was there, but it's easier to not, like, the same concept of, like, doing the inner child, it's sometimes easier to not deal, you know, like, Mm -hmm. just keep moving in this, like, illusion that we have created for ourselves. Um and knowing like the pain and hurt that could be revisited not only by ourselves but those we care about and love and love us by going back in time it's really tricky for me because it reminds me of like what you shared about how uh, always wanting to keep the peace like not wanting to disturb the peace of others so um taking them to into account more than you take yourself into account Mm -hmm. and is that something present in this process that you're navigating now 100 percent hundred percent and it's like no like my inner like care for you like like that like ego warrior kind of energy mm-hmm. is like no fuck everybody <laughs> like bring the light out you know like yeah say what you gotta say but you know i don't know because that's like i'm not the one experiencing what you're experiencing but it's really just a matter of like making sure to always honor honor yourself because that's ultimately what this process is um intended to do yeah But doing it, of course, with, like, an open heart and heart-centered. Exactly. Because (laughs) I'm lit out here, you know? I'm ready to be in the back of (laughs) life. That's exactly the battle. And that's why 
I think I was explaining to French, I could find moments that like I'm great, you know, like again, I'm happy, whatever, like, but I feel myself disassociating. And that can be part of that process of like just not because it's in my mind and it's the exact lesson like, okay, I'm still worried about others' emotions or like their emotional well being more than I'm considering like how something is like in my head every day so yeah yeah that's so important that's so important because you matter first and foremost it's your life you know and those that matter to you and that you matter to them they'll hear you and see you you know Mm -hmm. it's not for everyone to hear your truth it's for those that you feel like deserve to know especially if it's something that lives within you like it's very prevalent yeah absolutely and how they respond is there is is up to them Mm -hmm. as long as it's coming you know it's not like you're going to attack anybody it's just like this is my experience this is what it is and it really lives within me right now and i'm navigating this space where i'm learning to be more myself speaking up for myself so i want to share this piece of that's very real for me and then that in itself can just let it go you know yeah but that's just (laughs) <laughs> it's much easier said than done, of course, and yeah. I'm not in your shoes, so I could only support whatever you feel is best. Thank you for that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that was beautifully said. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I like. I think about all the people who have experienced certain things that, like, they kept to themselves. It's like, damn, it's so not needed, you know. Yeah. But I trust that things happen for reasons, and like we experience whatever we experience for whatever reason like whatever it is yeah and it's i think maybe it may be easier to think about like from someone you care about that they experienced and how like it's so prevalent in their current life even though it happened so long ago and knowing that they're having that internal battle and then they come to you and they've been holding in this battle for so long like you know wouldn't you want to be able to support them through that journey absolutely yeah. like that's something that definitely has happened and i feel like that's where the like the inner turmoil can come from because like i get i get it from my experience in a way i get it from the other person's experience i get like that protective like yo you gotta say something like you gotta do this but then i also get like i know what could happen if you say something and that's so. the same dialogue that occurred way back in the initial encounter. Exactly. And that's how like things perpetuate and, and continue on for generations. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a big ask, honestly. And it may <laughs> be like, just because you're aware of something doesn't mean like it has to be through you in this way, you know? Like that can be someone else's job, <laughs> but you know, it's just you have the awareness to do with w- do to do with it with what you choose. Yeah, yeah. whatever is right for you, whatever feels, whatever feels right for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever feels important. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you value, mm. you know, whatever you're feeling in that moment. Yeah, cause and like speaking of generational, it's like that's why this inner child work is so important because like we're living or like we're raising children in a way that like we aren't prioritizing their well-being we aren't prioritizing their emotions like we're not having safe spaces to process things that come up we're humans it's expected life is going to give us adversity you know like or something like trials and tribulations are going to happen but we're not cultivating that environment and i say we're not because it's like collectively I definitely know that there are some people who practice conscious parenting, conscious like relationships, all of these things. But as if we're not all doing it, we're not doing it. So um, in order to like begin breaking these generational habits and like dysfunction and, you know, everything that we as a collective experience, um, we have to do that inner child work. If we were in a space that we cultivated safe spaces and we were learning from infancy how to process emotions, inner child healing wouldn't be a thing. But it's obviously a thing because there's a need for it. Yeah. 
And I guess that's why the awareness is important, because if you learn that within yourself, you stop yourself or can stop yourself from repeating things that you saw affected you in a certain way onto, you know, your child or somebody else's child or just, you know, younger people in general, you know, or just people around you in general, you know, Mm -hmm. because it isn't it's not like you doing it to just kids, you know, you're doing you may be doing it to old people, too, or, you know, you're equal, your partner or whatever. But obviously we are imprinted as childs. So to bring it back to that, um, why that's important is because you stop yourself from repeating that to, to a child and they don't have to grow up and have to unlearn that or not repeating it. And that's like you said earlier, how you break that generational curse. Exactly. Yeah. It's so important. And it, it reminds me of like little things of like, Oh, don't cry. Why are you crying? Like so many things like, that even still today I find myself like oh don't be sad it's like oh actually no like be sad be whatever you are (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, like for me it was like oh man like he's such a good kid like he's always quiet and it's like I was just good at you know keeping my thoughts to myself and not wanting to go crazy so like I was just all right I'm gonna just stick to myself Mm -hmm. you know and then that can turn into me not learning how to express myself outwardly to other people like Mm -hmm. or you know so like if I don't realize that within myself I'm showing that to other people like, oh, I, I don't, oh, they, you know how you, there's so many fathers out there or older people that you'll hear like, oh, you know, I know he loves me. He doesn't say it, but I know he loves me. Like, you know, mm-hmm. tell, he tells me with his actions because I think a lot of people live in their heads, you know, and it's harder to say certain things because I, I don't know why, I guess I haven't really thought about that, but um, it's just interesting to see it from that point of view, you know. Yeah, and that's, like, such a good example. Like, you don't know why, but, like, it's a thought, you know, or, like, it's there. So, like, getting to the root of that, like, that can bring up so many so things. Many yeah, things <laughs> that not many people want to be diving into, you know. It's just easier to just be like, that's how he is. He's quiet. I know he loves me. You don't tell me, but that's okay, you know. And that's how things just continue on for mm-hmm. generation to generation. So to really blaze the trail forward, it takes a very powerful person, very courageous person, and it takes a tribe, it takes a community to do it. Yeah, I would say so. Like that is also something else, like with the the different like processing of emotions. Um, most of my life, I would process my emotions inwards, right? Like I would just like do whatever I have to do in my own mind, deal with it or not deal with it, bury it, whatever it is. Um, but when you speak it out loud, even if you're just speaking out loud to yourself, like if you don't have anybody around and you're just like allowing the words to flow through you, it helps that processing. It helps like releasing those emotions and experiences. And it's also validating because now you're like bringing the word to that experience um but having support like having those be able to actually hold space for you while you're processing or like bouncing ideas off of each other because perspectives are really healthy in this way um to prevent that like downward spiral or getting looped in victim mentality you can have a different perspective be like oh like oh yeah like what you experience valid you know like 100 percent, nobody can take that away from you but maybe also xyz Mm mm-hmm I love it. I love the validation of like speaking it all out. It's so great. (laughs) It's excellent. Yeah, because I mean, your thoughts sound different the moment you say it out loud. Like you can be so convinced about a situation just from hearing your own voice in your head. Yeah. The moment (laughs) it comes out of your mouth to another person or even just out loud to yourself. There's been so many times that I'll say something out loud and and think and say right afterwards like that feel so much different than what I thought it was going to be. That did not come out the way I felt it was, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that could be part of that process of, like, you know, just having that space to speak to somebody else or just maybe just say it all out to yourself or write it down in a book or something, you know, Mm -hmm. just have somewhere where it's not in your head and see how your relationship changes, you know, yeah, or can change. And I would say, like, if you write it down, because that's something I, I, like, practice, like, I journal a lot. Um, and I don't go back and reread my journal entries, but recently, like I just flipped to a page in my journal and read something and I was like out loud. I was like, wow, that's so different from what like I remember, um, like the feeling to be. So even that, like if you write something, try to say it out loud, you know, 
and see like is that your truth or was that led by the emotions like the emotions got the best of you and created something that it wasn't or did you like dim it down as a form of protecting yourself like was there more emotion that needed to be expressed but you were just like okay yeah like this happened is cool it's scary like it's scary sometimes to just even speak it out loud to yourself yeah like i find it's easier to speak it to someone else than it is to speak it to myself out loud because like oh my god i have to face myself <laughs> you know with no one else to like um like take it away from me kind yeah. of yeah and i think that's why like the stories and the thoughts that live in our mind feel so much heavier than they are when they're just spoken out loud because of the emotions that we attach to them yeah it's like it's a three-letter word and then the emotion is like 50 pounds on top of this three-letter <laughs> word <you know>? yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah and then you like say it out loud and it's like oh you can just like that's a bite-sized word you know about all the extra stuff that we add to it yeah and that's i feel is also good in terms of like um when deciding to speak up at least that's been my process because i'll see like uh, something starting to form in my mind and then before it's fully taken its own life in my brain i just share it and it's like <laughs> this is what it is you know before it's yeah. like oh my god this whole thing it's like and then i usually see from like the response of the other person it's not even anything close to what my brain was starting to create it to be i'm really glad that you said that because it just like brought a new insight to me in terms of like when things happen no matter what it is right like whatever it is that something happens the quicker it is that you process it whether by saying it out loud or whatever you're going to do to process it um that like prevents the storyline to start creating and it's like that's th those are the stories that like we have to dive into mm -hmm. um, because we didn't address them and allowed a story to even be created so it's like if something happened to you okay like I experienced blah 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 and it can end there like you know like maybe you were a victim in that situation maybe like something happened but you are not the victim you know like you don't become like taking on an identity or like whatever the case may be from that experience like it happened you dealt with it and you move forward because that's i feel like what life is doing for us it's an accumulation of these experiences and like how we navigate it dictates what comes next exactly and it takes a great courage like it's really the courage and the bravery for me like time and time again because it's easier said than done and like having to rise up to the occasion is a practice and having to do that like on a consistent basis when trying to integrate things that we're learning from our childhood and then also when trying to address things that are our first time being presented to us in the present moment mm -hmm. to then not perpetuate a story in our future it is such a practice yeah. and, it cre and it it requires a lot of mindfulness self-awareness yeah especially based on like past experiences so like you validate within your mind like something can happen today that reminds you of something from the past has nothing to do with it totally different energies but because there's like a slight similarity you already go into your next encounter with that person with like this whole storyline created based on the past mm -hmm. um, memory like all the emotions that came up from the first time in the past is like now associated with this new experience and like being identified like this is the exact same thing i'm experiencing because it relates somehow with a past moment mm -hmm. yeah it could be totally different yeah it's crazy it's crazy like the things we experience and then the narratives that we place upon it based on like our experiences because that's all we do like we make sense of the moment based on what we've experienced because it's the only thing we know yeah and it's you know like to bring it back to the, the thoughts that we had uh the thoughts that we have and you know are afraid to share or to say out loud or to share with another person like based on our experiences we may learn not to share our experiences based on what somebody else you know responds to you mm -hmm. you know sometimes i you know i feel like a lot of times you're not given you know the right amount of attention or safe space to just say something mm -hmm. it's you know it could be a quick to like you don't have to feel that like or you're crazy or like don't say that again you know whatever it could be mm -hmm. it could be something that isn't necessarily helpful because like you know maybe your thoughts are harmful or maybe your thoughts are you know whatever you're thinking is not a good pattern and that person is genuinely you know giving you advice okay like this is 
why this is not good or whatever. So like it's you know knowing the difference of somebody not listening to you, and because you know because you can take that person who's telling you like don't feel that way like that's ridiculous and then you internalize that and like oh I'm ridiculous, mm-hmm. as opposed to the person who's really just trying to hear your thoughts out and try to help you navigate the situation, as opposed to telling you to just ignore it all completely. So you, I feel like you need to have that consciousness if you are willing to share whatever is on your mind, to know who to share it with or to not take a reaction that you're receiving and then internalize it from a person who's clearly in the same situation as you or, you know, who even knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's such a good point. Um, and I tie it back to, you know, like I take everything that's being said and like apply it to myself. So I tie that back to um, the concept of me not having any compassion for the victim mentality. And so many times I like my loved ones come to me and I'm just like, you're stronger than that like totally dismissing or invalidating their experience because i see how strong they are in my perspective and then like that can close the door from them wanting to share with me in the future because it's like oh jerica is quick to like be very dismissive and she's always saying that we're strong enough to do or overcome anything so like why focus on it and that's so not fair to the person like that's such an invalidating experience even though i had good intentions so like having the awareness when people are sharing <clears throat> sharing with you, having the awareness of like, okay, like this, whatever I'm going to say, I need to speak from a conscious place because this person's going to carry this with them. It's very sacred to be in conversation with people. It's not something that, that should be taken lightly because of the impact our words and our energy holding space has on one another. Oof. I felt that too. Yeah. Was, I felt the here same i felt it (laughs) for real because like to be present is so important when people are talking to you you don't know what they're saying you know where they're coming from the fact that they're even speaking to you it's like they're choosing you in that moment Mm -hmm. to share whatever it is Mm -hmm. and it's like a whole level of presence like it's a whole other level of presence and when i was saying in the beginning of this episode like I always dismiss depression you know like i never took it serious but now i'm feeling these things and i can relate you know so part of the reason why i think we experience things is to be relatable you know like we can then show up um when needed so like i trust that's why i'm experiencing this and i have like a whole different um view on what people can associate depression to be or like these feelings that are unexplainable even if life because that was that's something i always do like your life is so good like what are you complaining about like be grateful but yeah you can still be grateful and have this whole other experience at the same time and that wasn't a view uh, that I was willing to accept until experiencing it Mm -hmm. so (laughs) what was the that that Star Wars quote about uh, it's easy to seek the truth but it's harder to accept the truth something like that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean that's the whole (laughs) that's the whole thing I guess (laughs) It's easy to go back to the memories and but it's it's hard to accept you know what you chose or what you participated or what the other person or how it has affected you and how everything you do today is related to you know something that you learned at one point in your life you know yeah. and yeah. not that all of it is bad obviously hopefully most of it is good but <laughs> you know the stuff that does you know make you feel things that you don't want to feel yeah yeah actually it reminds me like i wanted to go back to what you were sharing jerica about um like dismissing people that can be perceived like in a victim mindset and like being strong enough it kind of almost be like a like it reminds me of the concept of like you're only able to go deeply with others uh, with how deep you've gone with yourself and like if that it sounds like it's something that you were sharing with yourself you know like speaking from your own experiences like no i'm stronger than that like i don't need to deal with this so it's cool to see like in anything that we share in our messages um like where we're coming from has a lot to do with what the message is that we're sharing let me know about myself come on (laughs) (laughs) no but seriously because we all do it no i'm taking in what you're saying because absolutely um absolutely especially when there's like when it's emotionally charged what we're saying you know like i'm sure that's something because i have my own things where i'm very like passionate about um but i'm basing it off of my own experiences and for me like i what 
quickly comes to mind is like how I feel about the medical um, world. Don't catch me there. Okay. <laughs> like for yeah. me, it's like, don't catch me at the hospital unless a limb is removed. But other people have very different circumstances. Yeah. It's like what comes to mind is a trigger is a trauma that hasn't been addressed. Right. So like anything that you can speak so passionate, passionate, uh, passionately about um, or even not passionately because it's still like landing for me. So it's like you can either be super passionate or super dismissive. But those are like over. They're like on the opposite ends. Exactly. Of each, of each so something's other. out of balance. Like it, it brings it back to like, okay, like let's find the balance of the situation. Mm-hmm. Because if you're being like outwardly aggressive and passionate about something, like what happened to you that you feel so strongly? Um, <laughs> and if you're quick to be dismissive, it's like, okay, like what happened that you don't want to revisit this within the self? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like that, you know, that security dog that's out there. It's like, don't get you get too close, you start barking, then mm-hmm. you bite, but you don't really visit it at all just because of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. It reminds me of, like, who hurt you? <laughs> you know, like, who hurt you, bro? It's a joke, but it's serious. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's I, so I mean, serious. But that's why it's such a good joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like bringing lightness to something that can be dense. And then it's like, okay, you go visit the Zen city. I'm just bringing it to light, you know? Yeah. But or like even taking it further, like to the sacredness of the conversations, like if you want to visit this, I'm here to visit it with you. Yeah. Depending on the situation, you know, because like 1000% and like the goal for me really is to, oh, like to wherever I am, I would really, my goal is to, always have whoever's around me feel comfortable enough like no matter what they're going through Mm -hmm. like that they have an open heart and an open mind to speak to um but that's for me definitely a practice because I definitely find myself in situations where either I don't know someone too well I'm in a social setting it's just like we had a party please you know but it's (laughs) sometimes that something is so prevalent to that person no matter the fact that we're at a party yeah and like being the the safe haven for someone to like process something um is so sacred in itself it's an honor yeah honestly like and that's why like yeah there's appropriate time and places but if somebody needs you they need you yeah you know and that's why it's so important to do like this inner work within the self to be able to hold space because how can you hold space for others when you're not holding space for yourself there you go again drop the mic right there for me (laughs) (laughs) that's it okay (laughs) no because it can go on forever like this conversation is so deep this topic is so deep and i feel like i haven't even we might have to have a part two i know i know like i feel like you you know because i haven't done any of the workshop i'm just listening through your experiences or just living through your experiences based on what you share you know Mm -hmm. i have absolutely not you know done anything because you know (laughs) i I feel like i'm fine by the way i am but i can see how there are things that i can learn from so you know i'm I'm curious to see where this will take me and who knows where i end up you know okay part two coming after you complete your workshop after you complete the workshop well not even maybe after (laughs) i complete just my next prompt in the workshop because (laughs) I'm yeah, in no yeah. rush. <laughs> Let me make that. I'm gonna make that real clear. <laughs> yeah, where are we rushing to? No, where are we rushing and that's to? a good point because it's like, yeah, I completed the inner child <laughs> workshop, or so I thought. I'm gonna carry this with me as I continue journeying through life because even though I revisited the past, I'm still having to revisit the present and then like be conscious about the future all at the same time. So it's it's a lifelong journey. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel just like the takeaway message i really want to hone in on is to really just be kind like be compassionate to whoever's approaching you if anything even if you don't have it in you to hold space for the conversation like just be nice or communicate it actually like yeah if somebody comes to you and you can't hold the space don't be dismissive like don't come up with excuses or like that uh, energy like i don't want to deal communicate I hear you. I see you. I just, I'm not able to right now, you know, because I always think of it um, like there was a party going on and somebody was suicidal and they were trying to like seek help, but everybody was so consumed in the party. Person went and committed suicide that night. 
it's like if one person would have given them the time of the day like to be like i see you like come here Mm -hmm. hug whatever it is maybe the the outcome would have been so different so it's like it's really hard to say because it's like your experience your own human experience and like you're here to enjoy it or do whatever it is that you want but we are all connected you know like we are all one and if one is hurting we're all hurting if Mm -hmm. one is thriving we're all thriving but we need to be able to recognize within others and ourselves find the balance of caring for ourselves but also caring for others like not one is more important and i think like that's my biggest takeaway you know as much as i care for others i need to care for myself just as much and no part of any of that is easy from any party you know Mm -hmm. like all part of that takes energy it takes making that conscious choice it takes you know it's it's easier to not be present it's easier to be dismissive it's more difficult to take those extra steps Mm -hmm. to be intentional Mm -hmm. whether you're being there for somebody somebody's being there for you or you're choosing to communicate i cannot be there for you right now for Mm -hmm. whatever reason Mm -hmm. or being there for yourself Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's just crazy (laughs) thank you for listening continue flowing in your own space by simply being if this resonated with you and you feel called please be sure to follow us like and share until next time wherever you go give yourself space space to to flow flow. Oh, it's so deep. I could talk forever on this topic. Like, it just feels crazy. I feel like I'm just learning from you guys' point of view. It's so crazy to but me. as I'm learning from you, like, you know, you share things that are very eye-opening. So it's a give and take. It goes back to that whole thing. Like, everything is an exchange. And that's why the conscious conversations, like, are so essential and are so sacred. Mm-hmm. and it's just like an honor to be a part of them and show up in that way like even if it's in the supermarket and you're just saying hello to somebody or they're asking you a question be present like it doesn't hurt you you know mm-hmm. in that exchange you're giving and receiving at the same time mm-hmm. even if like i that i really i feel you a lot on that because i've I practiced that like whoever it is you know it's customary for people to just be like oh hi how are you but not really mean it yeah and not even respond to the how response. are you yeah, yeah. Or you're like, hi, how you doing? Can I get a double cheeseburger? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you said, hi, how you doing? Let the person answer. Yeah. And on, on the flip side, like, I'll ask, or like, I'll call on the phone to a restaurant or a place. Oh, hi, how are you? And <laughs> they'll, they'll just stay <laughs> in shock. Silence. They'll stay in shock, like, <laughs> and then just continue with asking me what I want. You know, like, they, they feel like, this, is this person really asking me how I am? <laughs> you yeah. know, they get so caught off, caught, caught off guard because, you know, things become so transactional. Like, well, yes, there is an ex- is I think there's a difference between an exchange and something being transactional. You know, transactional, I guess, in this sense is more cold. But mm-hmm. even in a transaction, you can bring um, like that energy human like connection, yeah. which I feel like that's what the exchange is. An exchange is a transaction is just. Let me get that. Let me get that. Moving on. Why is there ever a transaction, you know? Well, it's the society that we Why is there a yeah. word? The pace, you know? like Yeah. That's what I think of, too. Because even in, like, at my part-time job, people ask me that, and I'm, and I'm ready to answer, and I do. But then I sense, you know, they're not there to hear the answer, and yeah. I don't want to be the weird one to... Because then they're like, <laughs> you know, like, looking at me, like... Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> i get it but i just can't relate like i i to that world you know because yeah. it's like if you're asking ask with intention yeah. if you're responding respond with intention and like be ready to have that exchange but yeah like we live in a society that's super fast paced that doesn't care about and anything everyone's beyond aware. that transaction it, it becomes you know i think it goes down to that how we were speaking earlier like you know you make that choice once and it's easier to make it over and over and over to be it becomes a learned behavior and not a choice mm-hmm. anymore so i think you know that part of society with you know so many of us maybe has become it's almost like it's redundant you know so it's just like we try to get to the quickest point the shortcut mm-hmm. which you know i guess that has its uses you know i'm not gonna say it it doesn't but 
it's unintentional at times, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like it's it, like, how can we bring more intention into everything we do so that there's less of this unlearning needing to occur? Yeah. It starts with us. Yeah, that's that's the question for the yeah. self. Like, yeah. how can I be more intentional with every single thing I do, every thought I have, every response I give, every question I ask, so that in the future, future me doesn't have to revisit these moments and process something. Yeah, it's really living a devoted life, and you know that's a lot to ask for a lot of people, and it happens in steps. Yeah, you know? there's no rush. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, there's no rush but you know be accountable for yourself <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, there's no rush but take the steps yeah i exactly. think that's what it is yes better said yeah